Hi, it's Liz and Angelo with Stand United, bringing back to you another week of uh, going over our live updates. Um, I'm going to turn over to Angela, uh, but just as a reminder, we're always on Facebook, so make sure to comment along with us, add your comments, questions, anything like that. We love interacting with our audience. Yeah, definitely. Uh, go online, check out our Facebook page, send us a note. We would love to read your comments. So we do read them on air, uh, but we won't use last names, so your privacy is protected. Uh, the very first thing we want to go over this week is actually a petition delivery. Uh, so the folks at Comedy Central on Monday morning got a huge box full of signed petitions. We actually printed out, uh, with, I mean, there are 4,753 signatures. That's awesome. So it's a lot. Yeah, they're all represented in this huge box. I don't even know how much it weighed. Like, I could barely lift it. Because uh, we printed out all your reasons for signing, too. And you'll recall that this petition was about uh, uh, someone who had contributed content to their channel who tweeted some really terrible stuff about Baron. So Comedy Central, uh, they have our name and number, and we are waiting for a response, but we're confident that one will come. So uh, that's definitely something to look forward to. And we will definitely keep you updated as we yes. hear more information. This is a pretty big one, so especially after we had such a quick victory on the MB NBC one. Yes. Um, we'll definitely keep you updated on this. For sure. All right. So we have a fairly new petition. It's going to be running for a while. Uh, that's because it is not an easy task to get a Supreme Court justice confirmed. So as you probably know, uh, President Trump's nominee for uh, Antonin Scalia's seat on the court uh, is a man named Neil Gorsuch. He's a federal judge. And uh, the petition actually asks something really specific. It says, confirm him without a filibuster. So you've seen uh, Senate Democrats doing hold the floor. You've seen them trying to filibuster different Trump appointees or nominees, rather. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people saw this. You also saw, like, the protesters out. Was mm -hmm. it last week when it's been a long, feels like it's been a long couple of weeks. But last <laughs> week when he announced... Um, his Supreme Court justice, there were already protesters outside of the Supreme Court with fill in the blank signs, and it said, hashtag stop. And then when he announced that it was Gorsuch, they wrote that in. So I feel yeah. like there was this, this was the plan. There was also Nancy Pelosi the other day said that she couldn't work with Bush on anything. So wrong, wrong it, year. It's her job. Right. It's so her job to, to work with people. Democrats clearly have no intention of nominating this guy even though he's he's a pretty legitimate well qualified oh yeah there are uh, even Court past Justice candidate yeah there are even past obama staffers who have come out and said hey we think this man is the real deal he's uh, has actually had to go through a senate hearing back in 2006 uh, to be appointed to federal court Mm -hmm. And at that time, you can take a guess, the roster of Democrats who were willing to cast their vote for him. That was then-Senator Obama, then-Senator Clinton, Pelosi, Harry Reid at the time. I mean, the, the whole group of them were ready to sign off on this guy. So the question is, what has changed? And we've actually got some really cool reasons for signing on this. If you want to check out uh, Lynn from New Jersey, if you're watching, we really liked your comment. You want to take a look, Liz? Sure. Um, Lynn said that clearly the best man for this extremely important position. Post. post. Or position. I mean, and the thing that's interesting about this, like, hubbub about this is that it doesn't actually change anything when it comes to control of the court. Um, it, there was a lot more fight about it when Scalia died under Obama because it would totally have changed the control of the court. And when it comes to, when it comes to the fact that a conservative judge is filling another conservative judge thing. It, it doesn't quite make sense why the Democrats are fighting so much on this one, especially when it's a well-qualified person that a lot of them had voted to put in, you know, what, 10 years ago. Exactly. And Liz, we have a commenter who agrees with you. Uh, Robert, hey Robert, uh, says they are just embarrassing themselves now. And uh, we hope you will sign that petition and leave us your comment there. Uh, that's very interesting because someone told me yesterday, I love this phrase, Protest is the new brunch. They're just protesting everything now. No matter what. And it, that's definitely what it feels like. And I think, you know, I think it's just getting old for a lot of people. I don't know about you guys out there, but I just, like, it's hard to keep it straight. Even if 
you're like, oh, who's marching today? And, and that's why? not to say that the reasons aren't valid. That's not to say that people don't have a right or shouldn't be doing that. We're just saying it sure does happen a lot. And uh, we actually had a really cool comment from Mark from North Dakota. Uh, oh, Mark, you're probably very cold right now. I can't imagine being in North Dakota in February. But he left us a great comment about uh, Judge Gorsuch. It says, spotless record and brilliant. So if you agree, go check out that petition. All right, for the next one, Liz, you want to take it away? Sure. Um, so we actually have a fairly new petition, right? This was just went up yesterday, This right? is brand new. Um, working with a partner organization, First, First Liberty. Liberty. Um, and they, uh, there's an executive order um, that they want Trump to sign the entirety of and not change it um, for religious freedom. And I don't know much. I, I don't think he signed it yet. I think it has right. been proposed, though, correct? Exactly. So this religious freedom order is uh, ready to go for President Trump. But even though he's been signing these EOs pretty quickly, this one hasn't made it to his desk for his signature. And what it does is it protects workers uh, within the government, so if you work for a government agency, and it also protects people who work as government contractors from religious discrimination. Uh, so it sort of fleshes out, sketches out our First Amendment rights to free speech, free exercise of religion, and it puts it in very concrete terms that fit the way that the government exists in its current state. Uh, so it's brand new. You guys have the opportunity to be some of the first signers, and we hope that you will. Uh, and I just really like the name, First Liberty, because oh, you think great, about yeah. yeah, First Amendment to the Bill of Rights. It took me a minute to get that. And when I did, I was like, I see what they did there. <laughs> yeah, we also have another one. This one is even newer. This one just went up a couple hours ago. And it taught me something about credit cards that I did not know. I will let you uh, take it away on that. OK, so this one's a Teach little us. wonky. This is, uh, comes to us from the National Black Chamber of Commerce. And it talks about how every time you pay for something on a credit or debit card in a store, the store has to pay a fee, like a small percentage of that transaction goes to the credit card company for the service of delivering those funds. So turns out there's something called the Durbin Amendment, uh, named for Senator Durbin. Right, and it allows big box stores, that's your Walmart, your Kmart, uh, what else, Sears probably. Anything national, I would assume. Right, it allows like huge nationwide chains to actually collect a lower transaction fee than a local small business would. So the playing field isn't exactly level, and this petition aims to change that. So the petition is completely new, and it has bipartisan support in Congress. Awesome. Yeah, and I never realized how much those transactions add up because we, the consumers, don't pay it. But the promise with the Durbin Amendment was, well, these retailers will save money. They'll pass those savings on to consumers. And it uh, turns out we have not been seeing those lower prices, while big box stores have made $42 billion in extra profit just from this amendment alone and not from their regular sales. So I had no idea that credit card transaction rates would vary based on where you were shopping. Right. I mean, I guess that makes sense because in a lot of places in, you know, a lot of the small stores, at least in D.C., they always have those minimums of like 5 or $10. And, you, you know, a lot of us realize that there's that merchant fee, but you don't realize that there's a difference in the two. So that's, I mean, that's really interesting. Yeah, definitely. All right. So that is our recap for this week. We also have a comment uh, that says, do you live in a cave? We don't. So just clarifying that. Hope you all have a great day. Not sure what petition you mean, but write us back. Let us know. We'll clarify whatever you need. Thanks. Bye. Have a good day.